OP's sill opens up a Pandora box of abusive relatives. I'm almost 30 years old and have a fraternal younger twin. My parents had us late after fertility issues and had been told their entire pregnancy I was a boy. Severe gender disappointment, neglect, and copious amounts of emotional, financial, and emotional abuse I can explain if needed in the comments, but my parents are irredeemable, and I will never speak to them again basically ruined my entire childhood and teenage years. I left home at 18, and when I asked for my papers IDs SSNS etc., I got them plus a cease and desist order from my parents. I haven't spoken to them and don't plan on it. Recently, my estranged twin sent me an email on my work email, which is attached to my new name because my parents gave me a UNISC name that I legally changed when I was 21. The email was basically a sad vent or rant about how she wished I was around and how she thought our relationship should be because, we're twins, everyone says we should be so close, and her basically demanding in a passive-aggressive way invites our family to my upcoming nuptials. I don't know how she found out, had my work email, or was concerned she had some sort of memory issue. TW. Physical abuse ahead. When we were younger, my sister realized she was the golden child and could torture me via my parents. She used to hide her things in my room and send my dad to go get her stolen stuff back from my tiny room in the basement. Results varied from being padlocked in the basement and only being let out for school or mealtimes I had a small bathroom with a sink in the unfinished basement to physical beatings. My dad and mom both used to hit me. I fell a lot down the stairs or slipped a lot. My twin, when we were 17, shoved me down the basement stairs. I ended up breaking my arm, getting a concussion, and needing stitches on a wound on my head. It was the worst injury I'd ever had. My parents forced me to back up the story of me falling because they didn't want my sister to get in trouble. My friends at the time helped me leave two months later, after graduation, because my sister enjoyed hurting me. I found out three weeks ago that my husband Sil 22 f had posted previously about my estranged family which isn't a secret. I am very honest with what happened to me and with the state of my estrangement with that family on her blog Ray, influencer. She left out a lot. Her followers encouraged her to mend the relationship between me and my family. My twin's emails suddenly became screaming phone calls and threats, so I sought out a restraining order but stopped at a cease and desist for my twin because she suddenly stopped the harassment. I thought it was over. I was very wrong. At my husband's parents' house during dinner, she stood up and told me she had a surprise for me. She told me she had driven my sister up a 26-plus hour drive so we could reconnect and be a family again. I have CPTSD from my twin. Her parents were mortified and took me to the back room, and my husband went straight to calling the police and yelling at his sister. Apparently, she didn't think the abuses against me were that bad because my twin lied and told her she never laid a hand on me. My twin was out in her car, and when the police showed up, she turned on the waterworks. My sister tried defending her until my husband's mother told the police about the cease and desist order. The police took my twin to the airport to take an immediate flight home at my sister's expense, she was given a formal warning. Our police force has its hands tied until she does this again. No arrests on first warnings. In the weeks that followed, my sister was completely ostracized from her family. My husband and her father ripped her a new one for pulling this stunt. Her mother refused to speak to her because she was so angry that someone would try to force a victim to see their abuser mill is a former DV advocate. My husband has agreed to give me the final say on when if I'd be alright to hear Sil's apology, which will be a ton of bullshit, I'm sure. The problem is, I don't want to see Sil ever again. I know she had high hopes to be a godparent or good aunt when we have children, but finding out what she's done cuts deep. I don't want to see her or speak to her again. And I have no idea how to say this to her because the level of betrayal and hurt I have in my heart is huge. It's been three weeks, but I feel the same as I did before. I've known her since I started seeing my husband years ago. I watched her grow up and support her. She knew the whole story down to the smallest detail, but chose not to believe me. How do I even begin to approach this? Edit. Thanks to everyone. I was busy today, so I didn't get to respond to everyone's comments, but I did read them all. Thank you so much, kind strangers, for the awards. I've decided to write a burn letter while at work, and it's helped immensely, but I'm not going to send it. My husband is behind me 100% in my decision to go ahead and send Sil a cease and desist letter and tell her she's not welcome around us for the time being. I've told my mill and Phil that I don't want to speak to her and that I honestly don't think I ever want to. I want her to stay away. Mill wasn't upset about the holidays we were set to host this year when I said Sil would not be welcome in our home. Sil's blog posts were removed, and every other trace of my life being posted on her page photos with us at our wedding, happy birthday messages etc., has been removed. 
I didn't even know these were on her blog. But she complied by removing all of it. As for my twin and estranged family, legal things are in the works. I have therapy set up for the next two months, and will be looking into anti-anxiety medications to help. I'll update you when I have more news. Update 1. Our attorney called us, and our restraining orders, which we have waited three weeks for have finally been approved. My parents will be served this week, as will my sister. Provided we have their correct address on file, they live on the other side of the country. Fingers crossed. After speaking to my therapist, and getting on some new anxiety medicine, I decided to sit down and talk to my ills and my husband about what had happened. It had been three weeks, and you guys are right. I'm allowed to be hurt and upset about this for a long time. My therapist said I needed to prioritize myself and my healing over my people-pleasing behaviors. I wrote a letter but decided I'd not send it because I didn't want Syl to use it as ammunition on her blog for sympathy points. So Mill and Phil have five children. Eldest Bill, older Syl, my husband, and then Syl. Eldest Bill has a best friend Middle Bill that the Ills adopted when he was a teen. When this all went down three weeks ago, the oldest Bill and older Syl were present. Middle Bill wasn't. I guess Middle Bill is one of the family members that babies Syl. I explained that I was thinking six months minimum for no contact or being around Syl. Mill thought it was a good timeline to teach Syl that this behavior wasn't going to fly, and Phil agreed. No issues there. But when Milfil explained to their children that Syl was on timeout with us for her behavior, Middle Bill and his girlfriend got all mad about it. I got a text today, thinking it was a friendly one, and opened it too. I failed to see why you'd ban Syl from the holidays for a simple mistake. It seems kind of excessive and really inconveniences a lot of us for the holidays. You can't even be around her. Grow up. I really hope you have a plan for the holidays. What are you going to do? Force her to stay at someone's house while the whole family goes out or something. Honestly, she's a child. She's allowed to make mistakes. Bad enough, Milfil threw her out, and now you're going to take the holidays from her too. Mill and Phil decided they were done housing Syl when she paid for a perfectly good room in an apartment 30 minutes away where the roommates are driving Syl crazy, only because they're all working from home due to COVID. Mill calls it a harsh dose of reality, and Phil says it's a month overdue. I just handed my husband my phone and decided I was done for the day. I told him to handle it however he sees fit, just not from my phone, because not my circus and not my monkeys. My husband sent screenshots to himself and just sent out a massive text to the whole family on their chat. It's been brought to my attention that some of you don't agree with my wife's decision to exclude Syl from our home during the upcoming holidays. After some thought, I've decided that I don't feel comfortable hosting the holidays this year like planned. I'd like to take a break from everyone until they know the whole story. And anyway, because of COVID, I think we should all stay home this year. Unless someone else would like to host, cheers husband. This is very my husband. We had already talked about how I didn't feel up for holidays this year. We have the bigger home of our nearby family and have hosted for two years, and he decided this might be the year to take a step back from it. I like the idea because my anxiety is at an all-time high, and I'm having nightmares because of what happened. He asked me to read it before he sent it. I got a few texts earlier from his grandparents, who spoil Syl that they needed to talk to us ASAP, but I forgot to charge my personal phone. The husband also forgot to charge his. He missed a few calls from his aunt and uncle, plus one from his middle brother, we're assuming he's pissed. We have a bet going to see if someone's dumb enough to come by our house tomorrow. Everyone knows we have tomorrow off and try to talk us out of it. The husband said he's going to answer the door naked and say we're busy. See who comes around after that. Update. Gran and Gramps did come by. My husband answered the door with a beer in one hand and his flagpole flying free in the wind. They were pretty disgusted and left immediately. But they were pretty much extremely angry. They confirmed what we thought they think that we're the ones tearing the family apart. Needless to say, my husband and I will be taking holidays off, probably indefinitely, with his grandparents. I sent them a long text about me choosing to heal and taking time off, rather than being the forgiving doormat that they expect me to be when it comes to Syl. Her actions have consequences, and they need to let Milfil handle this one. Update 2. I'm a midwife. I work mostly in telehealth at the moment, because we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm currently self-isolating because we have a woman at viability in three weeks, and I need to be COVID-tested or COVID-free before I even consider going into the office. Gran and Gramps showed up with Syl in tow at my clinic, which was locked because we weren't expecting any appointments and aren't taking drop-ins without prior authorization. So they ended up at our locked door and just did the reasonable thing and left, right? Nah. This is JN, territory. They're pissed and now want to yell at someone. 
They banged on the door for 10 minutes until my clinic's RN came out of her office with her phone on we have audio and video recording inside, which is legal per the posted signs on the property. She told them she wasn't letting them in who they were, and if it was a medical emergency to seek attention at the hospital, this is the whole reason we have audio recording inside the building, Saya. They said they needed to speak to me, and the RN said too bad. She then dialed the non-emergency line and reported them for attempting to enter the clinic when the clinic wasn't open. She then just went back to her office and sat down, like she's supposed to. Gran and Gramps got met by an officer who happened to be nearby and talked to them. He then called me because I had GG blocked. I'm gobsmacked here. They brought this selfish pass to my workplace a place of very delicate health and immunocompromised people and babies, and demanded to be let in. Yeah no I'm furious. I called my boss. I told them what was going on. We called the cops back and told them to write them a warning for trespassing. They have now been given one. My husband's pissed and called them, practically shouting down the phone. Their excuse. Sil needs to give me an apology, so we can all go back to being a family again. I took the phone and reminded them I have final say in, if they meet any potential great-grandchildren. We hung up and called Mill. Ever hear an angry Swedish lady? Mills are pissed over the phone, and I can hear it. My husband's telling me that the last time she was this angry, it ended poorly for the other person. He took our phones and blocked everyone. We've decided to stop visiting, taking calls, and just focusing on ourselves for the next year. He's mad and upset, apologizing every hour or so for his grandparents. We're trying to deal with my parents and twin on the other side of this restraining order received. They signed for it, no explosions yet, but my twin is losing. Her. Mind. I decided today that I'd up my therapy to three times a week. I'm so tired. Update 3. So the restraining order was delivered. My twin, sperm donor, and egg donor all received them. They were signed for, and I heard nothing from the parents, which was weird. I expected my egg donor to come unglued because I am the only one capable of having biological children. And that's my obsession with egg donors. Today, I woke up to the police at my front door. Yes, they know we have given the other parties restraining orders, but this welfare check was called in by my Jane grandfather. He's a cheating, scummy bastard that treats my twin like the sun shines out her ass. He apparently called them and spun a tale about my husband. Trigger warning. My husband apparently beats me every day, refuses to allow me outside, holds me hostage at home, and routinely degrades me in front of family or his friends. The police said flat out they didn't believe it because Jay and grandfather claims all his evidence is from my estranged twin, who is not allowed to be a witness because of the row. We let them in and showed them our home, our dogs, and the ducklings they loved the ducklings. They told us they'd file a report to counter the original report and that they'd be sending a copy to our attorney. Now we won't get any welfare checks from them, because it's obvious they're fake and a waste of time. My attorney contacted my JNG father and sent a long-winded statement of basically, we'll send you a cease and desist if you continue, and only slapped my name on it. We figured my husband's involvement would further their alternate reality. My Jaymont, the woman who helped me escape, sent me screenshots of a text she received from my estranged twin. Jaymont says to be on the lookout for her, deranged ass. The screenshots were sent to our attorney. Twin's text basically reads as some sort of angry rant. Copied and details removed below. Eldest is married to a sociopath. She would never not invite us to her wedding or cut us off without someone making her do it. We're her family for F's sake, and she just cuts us off. I saw her. She looked awful and skinny, like they were not feeding her. She had a black eye. She had a bandage on her hand and scratches down her arms. Her clothes were filthy. I'm telling you she's in danger, and the police won't listen to me because of a piece of paper. I can't stand by and watch my sister get murdered because this man is holding her hostage. His family doesn't even like him, and is afraid of him. If you are not going to help, at least do me a favor, and tell her that she has to contact me, because she needs to leave him. So in twins' reality, I'm an abused spouse who only does what my husband tells me. Because it can't possibly be the physical and emotional abuse she put me through when we were teenagers. Her last text was very not okay sounding. I pray to God that she doesn't get pregnant with this sociopath. What if he hurts her and her baby? Egg donor is concerned about this too. What if he beats her while she's pregnant and murders their baby? We forwarded all this to our attorney. He's working on protecting us from these kinds of false allegations by creating a paper trail of statements and evidence of our happy marriage. But she's still losing her mind on the other side of the country. We're locking down our jobs and bosses by informing them of what's going on. Not taking any chances. Also, Gran and Grams are not speaking to us currently.
we need to apologize for our behavior. The husband told them to expect to wake up and find 200 plastic pink flamingos on their lawn in lacy women's underwear, if they continued. Yes, we own that many pink flamingos. He was in a fraternity in college. Update 4. So Sil broke into our home. Things of little to no value were taken. She took Mill's car and fled to her new boyfriend's house, a few states away. The ills have cut her off completely, except for things they're legally supposed to provide, and told her to never ever come home. We moved to an apartment in three days, and told no one where we were going. Sil had a breakdown with Mill on the phone before hers was disconnected, screaming that I was a liar. I turned the whole family against her. She should have been warned before they cut her off. And she said until DH divorces me, she's never coming home. On the other side, I am taking a leave of absence from my job, because I developed a stress rash that turned into hives. I spent two days in bed and woke up to a call from a friend from college. In college, I had the emergency surgery that messed up my insides and caused the damage that led to my tubes being defunct, and I needed to spend weeks taking it easy. My college dorm saw me carted out in an ambulance, and their huge support got me through it. This friend has been my rock through all of that. But the news I could do of if is recent. I hadn't remembered to message him about it, because he's busy with his new baby a healthy girl and his husband. Apparently friend got a request and message from twin saying, she's worried about me and my unborn baby, that DH is beating me and getting worse daily, and that she needs someone to check on me for her because DH forced me to get a restraining order. Now my name is really common since I changed it think along the lines of Jane Smith. He told her she just had the wrong person. His, Jane Smith, has a pacifist husband, and last time he checked, she couldn't get pregnant because of a surgery. He assumed the wrong person. Twin sent him an angry response and insisted that no, she has the right, Jane Smith. And what do you mean she can't get pregnant? He blocked her and called me. He apologized, but I honestly felt relieved. I didn't have to do it. Someone else did. Immediately after our attorney got an angry, screaming phone call from egg donor, he let go of voicemail. I haven't heard it, but it's something along the lines of, I need a copy of her medical record because I'm her mother. Jaymont got a phone call, and instead of listening to the abuse, Jaymont assumed I'd told egg donor about my medical trauma and just told her, it's old news, egg donor, everyone knows about that surgery, and hung up. So egg donor and twin are now freaking out and sending me emails violating the restraining order demanding I explain why I had my tubes tied. How dare I do something like that when they counted on me to give them grandchildren? And the emails straight out said it. We had hoped you would carry a son for a twin, but your selfishness is an abhorrent affront to God. I'm just a means to an end, and they really don't care. Thank whatever old God is listening. Our attorney is already on it and wants to see them go away. Update 5. This is marked advice. Not okay, because I'm getting constant DMs from people urging me to seek legal counsel. We have an attorney. We are speaking with law enforcement. Anyways, Sill is in police custody. To make a long story short, Middle Bill had her at his house. His girlfriend witnessed some suspicious behavior, and she had some serious blackouts. It turned out to be drugs. Middle Bill was hoping to get her to sober up and get her to a treatment program because she'd die in jail. Well, he's now single, his parents are furious and we now know what was going on with Syl in the background. GF turned her in and moved to her sisters. She also turned over some seriously concerning messages between Bill and Grangramps. We sent her flowers and wine. We sent the screenshots to Mill and Phil. DH was heartbroken. Everyone else knew she was using her and never said a word to us. The entire situation has left him utterly shattered and torn, as have her parents. He told me last night that if he knew she was on drugs, he'd have gotten her help long before any of this could have happened. He blames himself and says that maybe it could have been prevented. I told him she made these decisions, under the influence or not, and would have to live with the consequences. We went to bed and didn't think anything else of it. I woke up to phone calls from Giant, letting me know that the estranged twin had a meltdown, apparently two days earlier. Twin had been taken to a specialized clinic after making some threats. It was the fault of egg donors and sperm donors. They had apparently told Twin that it was entirely her fault, I had decided to be child-free. It's a new narrative since someone told them I didn't in fact have my tubes tied. She's the one who threw me down the stairs and tried to kill me. She's the one who called me vicious names and insulted me constantly. She's the one who tried to poison me I have allergies and also destroyed every relationship I ever had as a teen. It's no wonder I turned out to be such a terrified, traumatized woman who refuses to have children. I was raised with a monster. Except we were both raised by monsters them. But no, in their narrative, they did nothing wrong. They were angels to us. 
Jiant said that Jiang grandfather had called her to relay the tragic news that her twin was essentially clinically insane. And let me tell you, something stinks like the effing darkest pits of a garbage dump. Did twin do all of it? She's being cared for by a clinic. If they think they can throw one of their children under the bus to save face with me, they're wrong. Play B games and win B prizes. Enjoy the prize of losing both your kids, one of which is a mess, and the other is leaving the country in eight weeks to escape you, and let you live out the rest of your sad, pathetic lives alone. Good effing riddance. But there. An update. I'm going to go scratch the office cat now, and see if she'll snuggle me. Update 6. My biological parents' egg and sperm donors, as I refer to them, are in trouble. I told you they tried blaming my estranged twin for all of the abuse I went through as if I'd somehow forgotten how much they abused me and allowed my twin to abuse me as well, and it didn't work. I never reached out. I'm glad I didn't fall for it because half the story was a lie. Yes, twin is in the hospital because of a meltdown, but she wasn't committed by our biological parents. Our biological parents abused her for three days straight. They withheld food and water, woke her up at all hours to scream at her, and didn't stop even when she begged them to leave her alone. They also refused to let her leave. She didn't get put in a hospital because of her meltdown. She went to urgent care because they had hit or thrown things at her for three days off and on. She was injured. She had the meltdown while she was being seen, which caused her to be taken to the hospital. Her doctor and mental health team reported it and got the police involved. At this point in time, we have been told that there will be charges against them. Their reputations are absolutely ruined. Our lawyer said they'd be lucky if their jail sentence wasn't a minimum of a few years. We no longer have anything to worry about with them. We leave in 30 days. We've told DH's family, and there's a whole mess going on with them learning. We are leaving for sure. But our move hasn't been sorted, and we have a lot to do, so I'm focusing on our move. We can deal with his family after, DH says. Fingers crossed. Update 7. We left. We didn't tell a soul we were leaving. It worked out in our favor. We landed a few days ago, are in quarantine now at a friend's house, and the animals are with us. Everyone's happy and healthy not me, but I'll explain later. DH feels utterly relaxed seeing his friends. He's back to being his jokey self. He called his family yesterday to tell them we were officially gone. It didn't go over well with a few of them. Gran and Gramps were furious. They demanded to know why he'd left the US and gone back home, stating that we wouldn't have stable jobs or a stable home in our home country. D.H. Gray rocked like a champ thank you kind Redditors for helping me explain to him what it was and how to use it. He explained that he would still be financially reliable if they needed something we've paid for medications out of pocket for them before. But we aren't coming back. We intend on staying here. Our real estate agent, with whom we're working, showed us virtually. A few nice homes in the area a while ago. We have put out an offer and gotten a response. Which brings us to why I'm sick. The house we want has three rooms plus an in-home office with a big kitchen, and would be perfect for a family. We had interviews before we left with the fertility clinic, all virtual, where my new doctor went over my file. He approved us, pending some tests in a few weeks, for starting treatment at their clinic. We don't have a start date months away, but I stopped my migraine medication in the meantime under his guidance, as it takes a while to fully leave my system. We're switching to a different one soon, so I feel all sorts of sick right now with migraines. DH also can't have lots of coffee, per his suggestion, so he's been grumpy in the mornings. DH relayed only my short illness to Mill when she called to check on us, and Gran was in the background. She made a passive-aggressive comment. People shouldn't be running away to have babies away from their families. It isn't right. And DH lost his SHT because he was already grumpy. He's never yelled at her before, but he told her if anyone was to be blamed, it was her husband, her, and Sil. Gran started wailing, her typical go-to and DH told her to, shove it. I don't want to hear fake cries from the kettle today. He retracted our offer to financially help them if they were going to behave like this. Mill said goodbye and hung up. Now we're awful people, and a chunk of the family on one side is demanding we apologize. We refused. Sill also reached out to us, probably aware of herself, now that she's been forcibly made sober by being in jail. But we refused to contact her. I can post a transcript of the voicemail later if anyone wants to read it. Also, our attorney informed us that the charges against my biological parents were dropped. No explanation. Twin was checked into a care facility for immediate psychiatric inpatient treatment, and I know my parents did that intentionally. They're now playing, our daughter is unstable, and were victims of her abuse, like they didn't raise a monster in their own image, and are now suffering the consequences of enabling her.
They reached out to our attorney to possibly have some mediation on our restraining order, and our attorney promptly used that opportunity to inform them we'd immigrated to another country and wouldn't be returning to the U.S. He's no longer our attorney after X date, and he hung up. At our attorney's insistence, I decided to call their pastor a week ago and had a heartfelt conversation with him over video about the situation. I explained my side of things and informed him that I was severely uncomfortable with them being involved in some church stuff. He had some tears of his own, looked at the stuff I linked him to emails, screenshots of text messages, and their voicemails, and thanked me for being brave and praised me for finding happiness in my own faith. I cried a lot because I'd never had their previous pastors believe me before. He told me that he would be handling it with severe urgency. This was all told in confidence. We have confirmation they were removed from the church activities a day later. Which leads us to today. This morning we received an email from them to my husband's account how they found it. I don't know that basically made me want to throw his phone. I'll post it if someone wants to read it. Basically, we left perfectly on time because they intended to buy a home a few hours from us and ask us to join them in their counseling while they made it up to opt for her neglectful childhood. Of course, we'd have to drop the restraining order anyway. That's been the last 18 days. Thanks for the people reaching out to check on me. I really appreciate it and the links to all the strategies and methods you guys have used. Very helpful. Edit. You guys are so sweet, but we're not in Sweden. A lot of families in the 1800s immigrated for work to different countries, and lots didn't return. She practices the traditions of both countries and speaks the languages, but she considers herself Swedish. Update 8. So for starters, I found out someone tried to open a credit account in my name. Luckily, my husband was purchasing our new dream home we move on Monday. With his own credit, and no big deal. I already had my credit frozen. I also require an IRS PIN for my taxes, and my SSN is locked, as well a long process. This was to prevent my biological parents from opening accounts in my name when I left home. They did threaten that a lot. You know how they were buying a home near us? Well, they didn't get the offer accepted. An outstanding debt of 180k in my egg donor's name kind of ruined it. I found out she spent 90k on my twin's wedding and honeymoon. Then she financed the divorce, and the rest was debt related to other things. Jayant relayed this all to me because she's hearing from Jay and grandfather who is slowly turning Jim. Jaunt warned me to check my credit because suddenly they could afford to rent a nice house. And we were bragging about it because it's down the street from my old home. It's near our new family, we can't wait to meet them. I was met with Phil muttering about things that would land him in jail, and Mill brandishing a rolling pin at her phone when we FaceTimed them. Yeah. They were using my name as a second person on the lease. Well, it didn't go through because of the freeze. She got asked a lot of verification questions, and her application was absolutely denied. So with just my sperm donor credit, which is also SHT, they didn't get the nice rental house. Or the house they wanted to buy. Also, their house that they sold, had a lien. I barely have any money from the sale. They were sofa surfing at J&G's father's house, and he was livid that the application was denied, for no reason. John clued him in. He kicked them out. He told them he'd have no such financially dependent loans in his lovely home. So they're currently sleeping in their car. I already filed for identity theft, even though the applications were denied and nothing happened, but it's attempted fraud. Still serious. Needless to say, Jay and grandfather said kicking them out was met with lots of crying and accusations, and he was horrified of their behavior as adults. He remarked that maybe I was doing the right thing by keeping them at arm's length, because while they were over, Every time they'd fight, the two of them would get physical. He also told them that they'd be lucky to even be allowed in his home again. His brother stole his identity when they were younger. Jane Grandfather ended up paying the amount owed as a young new husband. And it ruined buying his first house. He still doesn't fully believe what they've done to me, but, all in all, I wish I was there to see their downfall. It seems they may be running out of places to go. And with the estranged twins' care suddenly being passed to Jane Grandfather, I'm certain there's a storm coming. But I'm thousands of miles away, safe with my husband, and currently excited to be starting our IVF journey in January. So excited. I feel like I'm on cloud nine right now. Does it make me a bad person if I wish they'd go sequester themselves to a deserted island and rot? Update nine. I guess sperm donor finally had enough. He got his old job back, moved into a friend's house, and told egg donor that everything that went wrong in their marriage was her fault. It turned into a violent encounter an egg donor went to go scratch out his eyes with her hands. He threw her out of his friend's house and basically told her that he didn't have a family because of her. He was apparently unaware of her using my credit to try for that house, and when he found out, that's where he drew the line. Not at beating me, 
Not at torturing me. Not at screaming constantly at everyone. Or any of the other terrible things she's done. Oh no, it was pissing off Jam Grandfather. The man that he didn't want to piss off because he wanted all his money. Then I guess according to Giant, he realized that he could just dump Egg Donor and start over. He could have a loving, caring wife, start a new family, have sons, and just leave. They have no assets, so a divorce would be simple. Egg Donor made it easy, because she immediately assumed that I'd gotten to Sperm Donor. He cleaned up his life and left her. He had to be talking to me because I'm the only other one who did that. So she went at him a second time, demanding he give her my information. And this time he decided he was calling the police. She was throwing rocks and screaming at him a full-on lawn tantrum. And when they tried to stop her, she went crazy on an officer. She tried biting and kicking, but finally went for slapping and screaming. Well, she's in jail now. Assault on an officer and pending psychiatric evaluation. She probably won't be released anytime soon. I've since learned that sperm donor is kissing Jam Grandfather's arse to be let back into the family. Jokes on him. Jam Grandfather arranged a strange twin's care for a long-term care facility that he'll bankroll, and he decided he was going to sell his house. He already rewrote his will and left everything to Giant. He wrote me a lengthy nine-page apology where he acknowledged literally everything he's ever done wrong, down to stealing candy from me as a child during Halloween, and is moving to where Giant lives. Sperm donors on his own. The egg donor is screwed. I think I'm free. I don't have to worry anymore. With them being busy tearing each other apart and younger Sill being sentenced to eight years in federal prison, I think I'm free. Which is a weird sentence to say. I feel like I'm jinxing myself. IVF is going so well. We have our new happy lives I think. I think I don't need to be back here anytime soon. I hope. OP has been active. And seems to be doing fine in their new country. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.